Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Yossi Kosik and welcome to Options Live Trading. Um, please type in um, in a chat box that sound is good, that you can hear me. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to show you here uh, the slide that uh, points out that we are not financial advisors. We do not provide uh, any financial advice. Please read the disclaimer even if you need to stop it. And... Uh, this right here email is where um, you can get in touch with me uh, also after each session hi joe uh, good to hear you uh, i got your email we can address some of the issues that you email me um, and uh, i usually post uh, notes from a session uh, after it's over right here so this is a uh, last session that i back uh, uh, last month and uh, information is right there so you can see it um, also today um, we are going to uh, go over the big picture what the market is doing um, hi Jeff hi Mark good to see you guys um, so I'm gonna now open up the big picture here um, on our uh, top Tradactive Option Planner. And I'm going to say to you that the S&P 500 has been hugging this nine day exponential moving average. Uh, Iron Condor is a perfect kind of uh, situation and that goes hand in hand with uh, what the Joe was emailing me and uh, saying that he's doing the trade on IWM. So we can entertain that kind of possibility. Uh, so looking at uh, situation right here uh, i will uh, look at the big picture first so what i'm doing right now i'm going to the monthly and i'm going to recap what the big market is doing um in terms of the monthly picture so i'm going to start with dow jones and uh, if you have a recollection uh, of uh, me sharing with you before this area right here was uh, low back in uh, March of obviously year 2000 and ever since then we've been in a virtually straight up move well something significantly has changed at the beginning of this year so this is a uh, January and what has happened is that uh, we reached a high here in January and that's a past tense and ever since then we've been kind of uh encountering the downtrend and this downtrend that exists is uh, troublesome for a simple fact that uh, we are uh, losing the low of the february 24th we have created new low in uh, june and right now we're just stuck here inside the range of the June. And that definitely could be not considered bullish. So then obviously the best kind of possible solution while we are in this range of the previous month would be placing the iron condors. But analyzing just the Dow Jones that represents only 30 stocks is not good enough. We should also look at it what the bigger market is doing such as technology so i'm going to glance on the technology and you will notice that on the technology we have a same situation i have marked here previously the low of the march uh, of 2020 i have drawn the trend line here that uh, shows that we've been in an uptrend virtually till January, February, March, April, when we, with conviction, we have lost this low of the February 24th. And since then we've been going lower, lower and lower. And again, even here on uh, uh, NQ, that represents the 100 stocks of the technology, we are, still stuck in this uh, 
bar that is inside of the previous bar. So again, iron condor, perfect trade, and we'll get to it in a moment. So 30 stocks, Dow Jones, 100 on the technology sector, 500 would be inside the S&P 500, and we are going to definitely place that trade on S&P 500 because S&P 500 is a mother of all products, meaning in terms of the liquidity uh, of the options, it's way, way superior. Now, again, be aware of it that uh, um, Fortune 500, you know, it's a 500 company. So if you really want to look at an even bigger product, which would be small cops, um, capitalizations, right? you would then need to look at the Russell. And that's exactly what the Joe has uh, emailed to me saying that he's been trading IWM. And IWM is unlike the others. You know, if I can just go back to the monthly, you would see that it has a lot more green shoots than the rest of the market. Because when you're looking here side by side, each of these markets, you would see, for instance, January, February, March. March was actually green month for all the major indices all the major indices okay but what is interesting that following that april was red 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 but for uh, iwm or the russell it wasn't red it was green also another thing that i want to point out to you that uh, russell is different than everybody else um Russell's May was actually green while on uh, QQQ it almost got green but it was kind of still indecision indecision and on SMP it was kind of somewhat greenish so obviously one is unlike another in terms of the who's a I, I couldn't even say stronger because you know stronger would be looking where are we in the relationship to the high um, you couldn't say necessarily it's IWM, but IWM doesn't necessarily move as the rest of the market. IWM um, dances on its own beat, and there's often divergence between these two. So having said that, what I'm going to do now is uh, look at the S&P uh, option chain, and I'm going to search a very wide iron condor that I'm going to be placing on today's expiry, aiming to bring in maybe 80 cents, 40 cents to the top side and 40 cents to the bottom side. So I'm pulling up here option chain. And by the default setting, um, I'm getting type in SPX here. Um, I'm getting the monthly here when this thing loads up. However, I don't want a monthly. I will actually ask for July 12th, which is a today expiration. And uh, I'm not going to ask for three strike price because I'm going to ask for 25 strike prices. So I will be now looking at uh, looking at uh, out of the money option on the call side. And one of the ways is to see what this thing is just by looking at uh, activity of the open interest and of the volume so currently spx is trading around the 3850 to be exact 3848 is a current price so here i would need to scroll this all the way to the 3850 and then look what is higher in order for me to pick the bear call and then I'm going to also look at the, the bull pull in a moment. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just scrolling these things up. And as I'm scrolling these things up, I'm keeping my eye here on activity of the open interest and volume. As, as I'm doing this, I want to actually be aware of it that anything over four digits is what is interesting. So as you can see over here, three digits, three digits. And then all of a sudden we're hitting here area of the four digits. Well, there's a number of ways how we can actually 
uh, look this up. You know, one of the fastest way is actually just to observe that right here in this particular area we have a nine thousand uh, contracts, and this is at the thirty-eight eighty. 3880. So this in relationship to where we are at the 3851, obviously is about the 30 points higher, 30 points higher. So now having said that, what I want to actually just kind of bring in a conversation is what the market is doing right now. So this is the FinViz that I usually track and all the activity for the hour and a half has produced S&P movement of the 0.04%, nothing. So what, what's our expectation for today? Very, very little. So when I know that, I can actually then proceed to execute this trade. So S&P 500 for uh, July 12th. For a July 12th, and uh, looking at uh, 3880, perhaps bringing in about 30 cents, 40 cents. If by any chance this is higher than that, I will then go even further up. This is very rich premium. It's a dollar ten. That's not what I was intending to do. Now it just dropped 10 cents while I was speaking. But I'm saying to myself, I want to have an iron condor that is very, very safe, that gives me a lot of breathing room. So um, now we are at 3860, and this is 3880, and a high of the day is the 3870s that can get easily pierced. So I'm going to go down again visually over here, and I'm going to point out to you this round number right here that probably it's poking your eyes way more than the previous example because it's not three digits it's actually five digits so this one has a 23,501 contract traded just today since the opening of today so what I'm considering right now is to place that trade as a bear call spread but the problem that I might have is that it doesn't give me 40 cents it's giving me only what 20 cents 20 cents so do we want to now compromise our rules or what do we want to do well first of all this 3880 that i was looking has accumulated also the five digits as you can see over here we have a five digits activity of the 11,547 contracts right the only problem that we have is that it's only 20 points away from it 20 points away from it so obviously there's a lot of activity happening here at this 3900 but uh, if i wanna that 40 cents let me see if i can just move the price down slightly to the lower one and execute here this is 30 cents uh, i would need to go down one more which is 3890 sell single vertical 30, 50 cents okay so i'm sending it 50 cents i got 50 cents so without without spending too much on this i want to now make sure that i record what we are doing here so we bought the higher one and we actually sold the lower one that's pretty much what uh, we did on it and what I mean by we bought the higher one and sold the lower one, let me just bring the Word document here so you, you guys can follow it uh, more clearly. So I'm bringing here the Word document. So S&P is currently at uh, 38. SPX is at 38.60. So if I went ahead and I sold the lower one, and I believe that was a 38.95, and protected myself at 3,900, right? Then obviously all of them are out of the money. Let me just verify if I got those numbers right. No, actually I got it wrong. So this one is correct, but that's my bot unit. 
this is my bought unit, and this is my sold unit. So for a simplicity sake, I just want to point out to you that this trade right now risks. This is now risking $500. And the reason why I say the $500 is because the difference of the two strike prices is $5, but everything needs to get multiplied by 100. And I was able to receive the credit of the 50 cents. So my maximum loss on this thing, if we rip higher and I don't have a stop loss, is $450. But also return on investment in one day, it's amazing 10%. It's amazing 10%. Now I want to bring this back in a picture so you're aware of it that market was very, very, very tricky this morning. It ripped to the upside. And then what happened right after that? Right after that, it took a low of the day. It confused pretty much everyone who was trading at the time because even the nasdaq has lost them. and when a Nasdaq has lost day a lot of people have gone short right in this area and then the market started going where up a minute ago when i was pricing this trade we are dancing here close to the 38.60 and a change and right now already we pulled down three points so what is the point that i'm trying to make well point that i'm trying to make is that overall we are in a, if i just connect these two dots a downtrend so the bear call spread as of now makes perfect sense now again there's a divergence in the market because the dow is not behaving like the rest of the market, but the Dow is only 30 stocks. Dow has actually taken up the high and notice the Dow has never taken out the low of this bar. So it's like a baby that was born and as soon as it was born and never crawled, it started to create the higher highs and uh, higher lows. So here we have a higher low and we just created here a higher, high. but we are not trading Dow. There's only 30 stocks. We're trading the S&P. So what I'm planning to do right now, I'm planning to go ahead and place the put. And I was aiming to get the gain something like a 40 cents. So let's now search for the puts. So I'm moving here to this side. And there's a number of ways you can look at it. You know, like a, one of the ways that I personally prefer is to look at the, the volume. Now, I know a lot of traders who don't do the way I do because they simply go for a delta. And they say, oh, the delta 24, you know, that's mean that I have a 76% probability of seeing that option expire way out of the money. That's the one way to do it. But if you can confirm that also, that the volume at that particular level is also supporting this, then that would make perfect sense. So now create this in let's say uh, blue so you will know that we are talking about the strike price right here 3830 and if I extend this all the way up to here we can entertain the delta of the being 24 so that's mean whoever buys that put has only 24 percent chance of being right today while the seller of that put has a 76 percent chance of seeing that expires out of the money so what I'm actually considering is selling out of the money put and then protecting myself with the lower put, protecting myself with the lower put. So to make this less confusing, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to actually um, bring in again that Word document that I was working with you. And... Uh, Tell you just like we have a here selling to open, we're gonna have a here selling to open a lower put. 
And I know over here it says a 30, but that doesn't mean I have selected the 30 yet. You know, I still need to interrogate that a little bit better. And obviously we would be then buying to open even lower put. And in that case, if I was about to do that, that would be 38.25 put. So if there's any question, feel free to ask because I just left the bear call spread and now I'm moving to the bull put. That doesn't mean I'm really bullish on it, but I'm conservatively bullish just saying most likely we will not go below the 38.30, but I didn't completely yet select that. And Joe, if this thing works out, um, we're going to then look at the IWM and see if we can place the same trade on IWM. But I want to make sure that the theory behind it is very sound and that um, you're kind of following the logic. So I'll just float this for a second and uh, I'll go back to my uh, S&P 500 to look at... Uh, To look at uh, UFOs. Where are the UFOs on a S&P 500 when it comes to selection of my uh, lower leg? 38.25. Oops. Maybe <laughs> I'm too close to it because obviously when I was typing here. I said I want to do the 38.30. That's no longer good. So I would need to probably go lower than that because my technical analysis doesn't match that. Because when the market goes down, you see how we have this huge gray bar? At any given time today, we can go down. Yeah, I made the 50 cents on the top, but what about if I'm losing money here? So over here, if I want to really, really play conservative, Perhaps, this this is just me guessing, speaking out loud, I can be selling, let's say, 38.10 put and then protecting myself with uh, 38.05 put. That, that would match the technical analysis of what I have. Hey, why you didn't look at the chart earlier when the market was, yeah, because we already concluded that overall, the trend was what? Down. And and just to not lose a big picture while the market is live, what's the strongest of, of three of them doing right now? Still taking out the high or it's being beaten back inside the range like, like some kind of puppy? How did you dare to go to the neighbor's backyard, you know, get back in, get back in, you know, and then a dow dog just went back inside the range. Well, you were thinking that you were strong enough to bring the 100th of the NASDAQ stocks up and a 500th of the S&P. There's only 30 stocks right here. So, I mean, be aware of it. This is still bullish. I do not say that this is bearish as long as this trend line is impact, right? So I'm not afraid of the bullish side. I'm not. I'm more afraid of putting the bull put here and getting pierced to the downside that that's that's my concern so now that i know that i'm gonna be looking all the way down here at the 3810 and look how pathetic premium is 55 cents with 45 cents 55 cents with 45 cents. is it is it even worth doing it so, so take a look if i were about to place this that's a 15 dollars while I will be risking 485. Yeah, but you're matching your technical analysis and blah, blah. I, I agree with this. And that's why I'm saying don't just go blindly for the deltas and all this type of thing. You know, because when you're looking delta, oh, it makes sense and all this type of thing. Look for the activity. Look at this huge activity right here. This is the four digits activity, but I even have here huge activity. Well, how about compromise? 38.25 is going to bring me, I was looking for 40 cents, bingo. Let's quickly squeeze this in at 40 cents. So I might take some heat on this beast. 
I might take this, um, again, as I said, this was for educational purposes only. I do not want to uh, have you guys fire this straight in if you don't know how to fix this. So right here, I was able to place this at uh, 38.25 when we are sitting here, uh, S&P is at 38.60. So I'm giving myself a breathing room to the upside, okay? So it could go up 30 points up to the this level right here. So that's my, uh, I'm sorry, I was about to get a red line here, okay? It could go up here 30 points, right? But if it goes anything above 30 points, then I have a problem. Down here, when you subtract the 25 from a 60, well, it's not really equal distance, you know, but, but you get my point. You know, I have my, uh, my uh, protection to the downside in the terms of 35 points. So 35 points on downside, 30 points on the top side. How much am I risking? Well, if you assume that you're risking here $500 to make a credit of the $40, you will notice that in that case, your maximum loss would be, would be $460. But as a whole iron condor, right? As an IC, that stands for iron condor, I have taken in, out of the $500, I have taken in $90 of the credit so the most that I can lose is a $410. So what happened with my rate of return? It had significantly gone up. Okay, so going back to what I'm going to actually put inside here, I'm going to put the notes for IWM, but I'm using the S&P because the S&P is actually good study um, for everything that we're going to do S&P cash. So now... Having done this introduction in the first half an hour, I'm going to use other half an hour to look at the IWM. So without uh, uh, looking at the chart, it makes no sense to do this. So I'm starting with the chart first. And uh, Houston, we have a slight problem here. Why do we have a problem? Because we are piercing these nine-day exponential moving average is quite a bit so we're really not an uptrend we are kind of going sideways and that's why i said this might be a perfect trade actually for a sideway movement so we have the levels right here that i'm considering selling selling here 177 call and then I will be protecting myself. And let's say I just make it one dollar wide, one seventy-eight call. So that would be just like eyeballing it right now. On a downside, I'm looking here at uh, one sixty-two, one sixty-five. Let me just uh, somewhere somewhere below this area, one sixty-three. So let's just type that in. So on the put side, I'm considering. On the put side, I'm considering selling the 163 put and then protecting myself with the 162 put well having said that we better type that in in some kind of orderly fashion that it makes sense we were currently sitting here at the 72 72 let's say it's 173 i'm gonna just make it as a 173 and um, let's just draw the line right here so it separates the two trades and I find for me personally, kind of tabling around really, really helps. Tabling around really helps. So if I have an IWM that is sitting here around the 173, okay? And I'm talking here, uh, placing, selling to open 177 call and buying to open 178 call. Um, Obviously, I'm giving myself cushion of about $4 higher 
four dollars higher because the distance between the 173 and 177 is about to four dollars protection so this would be the bear call side right so my bear call is four points away okay now my bull put is right here and we looked at the selling to open 163p put and then buying to open 162p which would be almost 10 points 10 points away yeah so again i'm more concerned about the downside than about the upside so so joe jeff uh would you agree with me that we should be more concerned with the downside than with the upside when it comes to the iwm feel free to type it in i'm going to just take a sip of water here because looking at the chart is very very important looking at the chart is very very important so having got the answer yes i'm going to now proceed at the option chain for IWM and it defaulted to it I'm gonna go expirations and I'm gonna see what do they have well they don't have a Tuesday expiry but they have a July 13 expiry now be aware of it when I click on this July 13 expiry you might not necessarily <laughs> see uh, a lot of liquidity in it you may not see a lot of liquidity in it so we have a number of ways of looking at this one of the ways is a way that i show in one of the previous lessons let me open this up again i'm going to go to the open page bring up uh, dailies here and here's my iwm and i'm going to add a study so this add study as i was pointing out to you is uh, only the second one that is a patented so you see over here it says a patented and of course our ufos are patented as well so what i want to do right now i want to bring the auto study for this particular product and i'm not going to be altering here too much you know be aware of it that you could alter this any way you want it we're looking at the contract for a volume you can change it for the open interest but because i want to see the volume first i'm going to look at it uh for that so uh i will not be skipping the weekly options ending in the six days i will actually apply it and uh, wait here till i get uh, things load up so i have a here interesting situation if i want to do the july 15th which is really this friday and i'm looking here and i see a huge activity here on the 170. now personally i don't feel comfortable with that 170 for a simple reason that it's too close it's too near to uh the current price of the 172. So those can be the sellers of the put who want to accumulate IWM if it comes to 170 and they're getting paid for it. What did you just say? I completely lost you. Okay, let me now visually explain this to you. So this is July 15th, and this is that 170 put that we have seen the huge activity. I mean, if this is not poking your eyes, then I... I don't know what it is let me also include the delta here for a second so you would see that's a pretty low delta but the juice is very very good on it so if somebody goes ahead and sells one of these puts just as a single put they are bringing in 125 dollars and that 125 dollars gets subtracted from basically 17,000 and then they only need to risk the 16,000 on it. These are the sincere buyers who want to accumulate the IWM. 
But we are not that. <laughs> what we are, we are considering placing an iron condor. And if we are considering placing the iron condor, then we need to look for any other place that we have a somewhat great activity. So I have it at 166, which coincidentally is not that far off from what I was considering. I was considering doing the what? 163. So 166 is another possibility. So, so although mathematically, you know, I would love, I would love to have these things done at these levels, 163 and 162. That actually, ladies and gentlemen, might not be very, very realistic for me because it's a slightly way, way, way too far off. So if I would consider doing this 166, then what would I need to buy? 165, 166 and 165. That would be then $1. So let's see how much money would that bring me in. So 166, 165, is this even worth doing? it? Ooh, lousy 11 cents. Well, don't think that as 11 cents. You're risking $1 <laughs> to make 11. So that's a 10%. But that's not all. What about the other side? So I'll take this one. I'll take this one. Selling. Let's see if they're going to fill me. You know, usually it says ding right away. Now over here, they're probably. Uh, we're going to give you that for uh, 10 cents credit. Okay, fine. Give me 10 cents. Again, this is for educational purposes only. I just want to make sure that you're aware of it. So basically, on a $1 risk, I'm making 10 cents. That's that's a 10%. Now, be aware of that's a 10% in how many days? Three, four days. Three, four days. So if I now apply the same logic that I had over here, how much am I risking? What's my maximum loss? I'm going to get rid of this because this was my original idea based on what the UFOs and then you have a reality so you have a risk of the $100 versus a credit of the 10 cents so maximum loss is basically $90 but the rate of return is is a 10% on it now this should not be done by itself because what do we have on the other side we had a bear call that we need to do. So this bear call that we're going to do is going to be, again, backed up by what the chart is telling us. So we're looking at the call, and there's pathetic activity. Yeah, I have something in August. Yeah, you can have for August, but you are looking here at the July because it's a July activity that you are trading. Never mind. Never mind these other ones. It's a July activity that you're trading here. So I'm lifting this up. Of course, this red one that we looked at, it's poking my eyes. So, Joe, honestly, there is a reason why I trade the S&P 500 cash because the liquidity on it is so much better. And what can you do as a substitute? Well, you could do this. I don't know if you have ever done it. But you can compare what is the liquidity of the out-of-the-money bear calls on a regular rut for that same thing. And do not feel hurt and disappointed, but you actually must accept the fact that the three digits activity are not that bad when it comes trading the rut. So look at here. Um, sorry, I click on the wrong thing here. Look at the volume. This is a volume, and you have an activity here that is in a three digits starting from a 1790. And by the way, hint, 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 where's the current price? The current price is at 1736. So that's about the 44 points higher. You have a possibility of selling something for a decent activity. If you sell this for 295 and bring this to what? 205, that's looking good. Okay, I lost. Okay, that would be 179, and that would be the 180 if we go to IWM. Wow, so that's even higher. <laughs> if if I really have these things line up the way how the rat is telling me, that's mean that I can actually 
sell to open sell to open 179 and then protect myself even with the higher one which would be obviously 180 and that would be even better than what we originally planned so what i'm trying to point out to you when you're trading please use these red and green ufos as a, as a hallmark as a, a post you know that it's going to guide you as a lighthouse but don't 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 go blindly there you know like you need to have some premium that it's worthwhile doing so we we discovered that over here uh we have of course this is a 10 times bigger product right if this is sitting at the 1736 and i type in iwm that's 10 times smaller that's a 10 times smaller mm -hmm. then you would just knock down the decimal okay plus minus yeah of course so that was a 1730 this is a 172 whatever it is so let's see if we can get anything here at the 179 and 180. Now, again, uh, I don't like the liquidity on that particular one. So I think I'm going to find a compromise. 178, 179. Let's see if I sell this. Are they going to give me 10 cents? Oh, they give me 13. I'll take that. Let's see if I'm going to get filled on that. 13. Okay. So in this case, it's still $1 spread. I did not want to move lower because then I'm getting in a 50 cent spread. Okay, why did I pick that one? The reason why I picked that one because I love, I really love the uh, volume on it. I had a huge volume on it in the four digits. Yeah, it would be better over here. Yeah, but then if I sold 180, what would I need to give back? Nine cents, and then I would get the nickel. It, that, that just doesn't sit well with me. You know, I prefer this one. So 178, 179. So let's now type that in so we know what we did 178 179 so we actually sold and we bought this and then this whole thing we can just delete because we no longer need that and we can also get rid of this so we have a here from a 73 to 78 five points of the cushion and be aware of it iwm as i have pointed out to you going back to the monthly has a tendency to have more green months than these other ones so take a look you know we're now in the seventh month of this year and if now it's end of the july and somebody asks you simply how many green months did iwm have you would have to say four versus three so three are red and four are green that's not true for uh technology technology out of the seven months had only two green months w what am i saying on iwm i'm more afraid of the bullish side and of the bearish side because i've been punched in the face by iwm and way 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 too many times not to disrespect the bear call side so let's now go back over here and uh, conclude what are we doing here we were able again to risk 100 to get the credit and i'm pretty sure we got 13 i can double check here let's get double check here uh, let me just take a snapshot of this because in a moment, I'm going to put that all in uh, Tridactive and we're going to then uh, post it for everybody to have access to after the session. Yeah, so 13 cents credit. So what are we risking here? My maximum loss is only 87, right? Now, for a whole iron condor, right? For the whole IC, we got 23 while risking 100. Then that's mean my maximum loss is. Yeah. Okay.
this is this is very good, very good, very good. I like it. I like it. Okay, so let's go my option chain. We're right here. Edit the spread. Uh, the leg. So we are talking about the expiration July 15th. One is being bought, one is being sold. The unit that is being bought is a higher unit of the Oops, wait, that's a, that's a diamond. Let's quickly change this to IWM. Okay, so now I change to IWM. You know what, let's just, let's just start from the beginning here. So we're going to go neutral. We're going to select here short iron condor. So it's going to fill me up and it's going to be easier to change all these things, especially because now when I change this and I select the July 15, I don't need to be changing this anymore because it just change from the top to the bottom. Okay. So starting from the bottom. So we did the 165. We protected ourselves with the 166. Why do I say protect it? Well, just in case we go down, right? On the top, we have a 179. And over here, we have a 178. So let's now go fill price. So what do I got filled? I got filled on a 179. And I'm looking here at the other screen where I actually uh, type in. So I paid for this 23 cents, but I was able to get the 36 over here I was able to get 42 cents but then I had to return 32 cents so when I click now okay I have now ability to go to the risk graph and this is this is what I'm going to be putting in uh, in uh, oh, this says a long item condor where it needs to say short So let's go edit the spread one more time. Oh, now I need to repeat everything. Okay, for educational purposes, we can do that so we don't lose anybody. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to be on the top of the call and the bottom of the put. So it's kind of like easier. Like I'm always thinking from the top to the bottom. So on the top, we had the 179. So we did 179, we sold the 178. Then we have a 166, and below we have a 165. So that's exactly what we have here. So now I just need to fill in what are the fill prices. So fill price for a 165 was uh, 32 cents. On this one, fill price was uh, 42 cents. So not to lose me. I want to point out to you where I'm getting these numbers. 65 is 32 cents, 66 is 42 cents. That's where we got the credit of the 10 cents. And we executed this at 8.30, while at 8.40, we executed the other one. So I was talking for 10 minutes in between. So we go over here, <clears throat> and we conclude that I was able to get here 36 cents, and I only had to return out of 36 cents. 23 cents so now when I click OK and I go over here to the risk graph it same math that I have provided you before in the terms of the in the terms of what we are getting here so one more time let me take a snapshot of this this is what I'm going to be putting inside the <clears throat> inside that uh, sheet in a moment and this is probably most important for you to understand the break-even point it could even pierce 166 and i'm saying it could pierce 166 but it shouldn't pierce it more than 23 cents because of 166 minus 23 cents it gives me this 
break-even points to the downside of the 165.73. On the top side, I have a bear call spread at 178. It can pierce the 178, but not more than what? Again, the 23 cents. This is very important to know when we have this kind of trade in case something um, should the long put be uh, should the long put be uh, lower? Yeah, I, I agree. If this was a live trade, if this was a live trade, Joe, this is how I would do it. Okay, I would go back to the Russell. It's a Russell for me that is a revelation of what is really taking place. So is it fair enough if you look at the Russell? And Joe, I'm gonna just interact now with you if you can be ready to type in a chat box uh, answers to the question that I'm asking. <clears throat> so now I'm going in the rut, and rut is still sitting at 170, 1,736. So that's me the, the oldest time that I'm talking. Look, look, look what the market is doing. This is amazing, you know. Like I mean, there, there, there are times that I'm teaching for one hour, and market fluctuates crazy. S and P has moved 0 0.05 to the downside. Earlier, when I look at it, it was 0 0.04 to the upside. Obviously, the best possible kind of trade right now based when you have this indecision it's not, neither sea of the redness nor is a sea of the greenness it's just kind of 50 50 look look at this if you're just focusing right here how many of them are advancing 50 how many of them declining 42 who's winning nobody nobody there's no clear winner there's no clear winner between the two sides that's the time that you should say Okay, it makes sense that we do then iron condor, and that's exactly what we are doing. Um, yeah, I had it switched, but l let me just point out to you, you now, like if I was about to do this live with uh, with the rut, I, I would try to go as low as this one. And the reason why I'm saying I would like to go as low as this one, and a lot of people say, oh, it's a delta and this and that. Well, you can say whatever you want about delta, but be aware of it. You need to be able to get some premium in. This premium in it brings a dollar thirty. Maybe that's a little bit too rich, but let's see. If I would just memorize these prices, sixteen eighty, and see if they have a one for tomorrow at the sixteen eighty. You see, I'm at the sixteen eighty. It has a pathetic activity of only twenty two, right? But that's just activity today, because if I go over here on the option. It might uh, be more. Well, it's only 30. But anyway, what I was pointing out to you, when you go to sell it, you ain't going to get too much. Uh, I'm usually risking about 40, you know. On, on this end, I'm risking 40. So let me just let me just fire this one in and I'll see if I'm going to even get filled, you know, because they can quote anything they want, but they just won't give it to you because uh, the spread between the bid and ask is so wide. Look at this. This spread is at $25. Oh, it's 25 cents. Yeah, but you need to multiply this. So they quoted me right here for like, oh, we're going to give you 42. And now the moment they say, give me 42, what do they say? Oh, now we're going to give you only 40. Just be aware of it when the liquidity sucks, like it does on this one versus a S&P 500 mother of all product. You will need to be very, very patient. So now if I go over here to the top side, you see this activity right here? I'll try to get something there. And then you realize you can. You're selling the 50 and you need to return the 50. It's just, but look, IWM has a way better liquidity. Isn't that kind of ironic that IWM has a better liquidity? Look, look, look at this. Four digits contracts, three digits contract. So you're dead on, Joe, when you're hitting the IWM instead of doing the rut. It's not that I'm not trading rut. I'm trading rut all the time. <laughs> but I'm very, very aware of it that it's not as liquid. It's not as liquid. And, and then you get this kind of situation. You can sell this for $0.09 cents and you need to return $0.05. Cents. Who in the right mind would want to do that? But this thing has been open for a while. And that's why there's activity here of 372 contracts closing some of these 561. 561. Let me just see what else I need to put into this sheet before I end the session and uh, make sure that we have it. So we explained the whole enchilada in the terms of what we're risking, what we're making. So each of these trades by themselves 
are okay. Over here, you would get the rate of return of 13%. On this one, you will be getting the rate of return of the what? Of the 10%. But when you combine this, your rate of return is at 23%. Now, is it okay if you buy this back for $0.05 cents each one of them? Sure. Well, how, how do you do that? Well, let me now show you this, and then we are almost out of time, so we need to then um, wrap this up. So um, I'm not going to get filled on that one, so there's no doubt that they, they just quoted that thing, and then when you go and you really want to trade with it. So over here, uh, I'm going to try to close the 170 eight because that's my obligation and i'm going to try to close the 166 which is my obligation i'll be able to close each of them for five cents and a five cents that's mean my overall pnl is going to drop from a 23 cents right so five cents on one side five cents on another side it's going to drop down on 13 cents <laughs> yeah but don't don't forget what's happening tomorrow Tomorrow is a big day in terms of the announcements, right? So I'm, what, what I'm doing right now, I'm bringing up the Forex factory. I, I don't know how many of you know about the Forex factory calendar. Okay, so here's the Forex factory calendar. And uh, one of the ways that you can... Uh, deal with this you go up here where it says uh, filter and I personally I check everything except US so now when I apply this uh, I want to select only tomorrow we have a two red flag events and both of them are taking place <laughs> when only the future market is open so I was disclaiming to you, please do not place this trade because it's for educational purposes only. But these consumer price index, if you don't know what it is, you know, you just click on it. And this sentence, in my opinion, is probably the most important sentence. Why you as a trader should even care? <laughs> because the consumer accounts for majority of anything, anything. So be aware of it. That's coming up tomorrow. So I will now put a stop on every one of these. And the uh, way how we do that is uh, you go into the options. You look for a minus sign. So this is a minus sign on S&P. Create the closing order. You just bring it down to... Five cents. Make sure that you keep it on a good to cancel. Bar it in. Same thing over here. This is IWM closing order. I'm not going to be clicking this. I'm going to just type it 05. Good to cancel. Fire it in. I have here another minus sign. That's for SMP. Same thing. Just type in 05 rather than clicking these. Time in force, go to cancel, and last one right here. So, five cents, do not forget time in force. So, now when I go to each one of them, you would actually see that we have a position here with the buy orders. So, we have, uh, there it is. So what I'm going to do now in this last uh, piece, uh, I'm going to take a snapshot of when I go over here, edit spread, where I got filled. So I can post that for this short iron condo. Take a picture of it. Print screen. Dump it in this document and then post it for all of you to see it. In a, oops, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> okay, anyway, so uh, one more time. Print screen, just this particular session. And I'll see you next week. If I'm not mistaken, it's on Tuesday that I'm teaching. And by then we can actually discuss how well this uh, trade has worked out. Uh, 
just before I dismiss, let me see here comment. Should we also look at uh, expected move when selecting? Yes, yes, Joe. Expected move is probably one of the things that keeps you functional and keeps you. <laughs> I don't want to use the word sane, but you know, like, let's let's use the example right now. SPX and just go over here and look at it. Uh, add the money, call and a put. Okay, so if I would add the thirty-eight dollars with the thirty-eight dollars, okay, thirty-nine plus thirty-seven. So, so today they're expecting that we're gonna move about seventy-seven dollars either up or down, <laughs> and we move only one. So yes, always do that. So you look at add the money and add the two numbers. Okay. So thank you once again, guys. I'm going to see you next Tuesday. And uh, within the next few minutes, I'm going to post this trade for all of you to have access to on our website here, tradeactive.com slash Yosip. It's going to be right here. Uh, it's going to read uh, July 12th, and it's going to have all this matrix here. Thank you once again, and have a good day. Bye.